I'm happy because I'm going to put it Good evening. I welcome you to the Iowa City Community School Board meeting on Tuesday, February 11th, 2020. My name is Janet Godwin, and I want to thank those in the audience for joining us tonight. I'll start by introducing those at the table with me. To my right, Director Lisa Williams, uh, Sean Eystone. To my left, Roythina Malone, J.P. Clausen, Charlie Eastham, and Kim Coleman, Recording Secretary. The public is reminded that if they wish to speak, they need to complete a speaker form found at the table in the lobby and turn it in. During community comment, persons may speak to the board about topics relevant to the district. All community comment directed at non-agenda items and agenda items shall take place at the beginning of the meeting during the community comment section of the agenda. And uh, first up, we have our student representative updates. Uh, first, we have City High. Hello. Hi. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mira Bohanan Kumar. You know me by now, but um, I'm the student body and class, senior class president at City High. And I'm here with a few updates on what's been going on for us recently. Uh, first of all, we had a mock caucus on February 3rd, and we even had a clear winner. This was <laughs> and a this clean was a, process. Yes, it was wonderful. <laughs> it was unexpected. But um, yes, so we had our mock caucus on February 3rd. That was organized by Caucus Club. And that w the aim of that uh, mock caucus was to help students learn how to caucus and become more involved in the political process, especially with our important role here in Iowa. We, uh, our MLK Day celebrations were unfortunately snowed out, but they have been rescheduled for this Thursday the 13th. So we look forward to having that happen. On that day, students can choose their own sessions and it's very free form and students have the opportunity to, to build their own schedules on that day and to really experience our important sessions on different topics of importance. A uh, student senate is currently planning the winter formal, which would take place on Saturday evening, and that's something fun that we've been working on for a while. We had a very successful jazz showcase last weekend. We had huge turnout there for both shows. That was really amazing for our, our jazz performers. We also had a great orchestra concert last week, including a very challenging set, which I've heard they performed wonderfully, and also including a special uh, song, which, which included both the band and the orchestra. Our, one of our debate duos, Simon Weiss and Ellis Chen, are currently ranked among the highest ranked policy debaters in the country and also won a big debate tournament in Chicago recently. They've also qualified for the Tournament of Champions, so that's super exciting for them. Uh, the fourth issue of our paper, The Little Hawk, is coming out on Friday, and that's we're looking forward to that. Also, some special political caucus coverage, so that should be really enjoyable. Class registration this year, City High is proud to offer AP Environmental Science for next year. I know a lot of, especially juniors and sophomores, are really excited about this course, and it came about in part because of collaboration between the administration and student climate activists and environmental activists, so we're really proud to be offering that next year. The Alumni Association has donated money to the school to help support uh, finding a way to honor Howard Vernon within the school. So uh, our principal, Mr. Bacon, has created the Howard Vernon Leadership Awards, and those will be given to one student from each grade level every trimester in order to honor their work in the classroom and uh, to show, to honor their leadership in the classroom as well. We had many students win Scholastic Art and Writing Awards as well. Uh, in the past couple of weeks, we received that notice, including several gold keys, which is the highest level of regional award. But all students who got awards, I'm sure, did amazing. And that was really, we were really proud of that for our school. We have also had two students receive nominations for the Presidential Scholars Program, which is very exciting as well, among 4,500 throughout the nation. Our musical cast list has been published in the last couple of weeks, and the cast or crew, the cast and crew are starting to prepare for Matilda. I, I know the choreographer, the student choreographer personally, and I know that they're putting in a lot of work right now, so that's going to be really exciting in the spring. And uh, finally, our women's basketball team is ranked number one in the state and won a really big game against West Des Moines Dowling. Um, and they're currently undefeated. So thank you so much. That's all I have for you tonight. But I hope you have a wonderful month until I see you next. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, next up, West High.
Hello again. Hello. Um, my name is Didi Borde, and I'm a junior from West High this year. So despite the weather and few um, school day cancellations, West has stayed very busy this past month. Um, in early January, West held its first official information and course day. So this offered students a chance to learn about their options for post-secondary school, um, as well as registration for next year. And it was also followed by a course fair during lunch where all students could look at different opportunities they had for different electives, as well as their core classes and AP classes. Um, also in January, West held their annual MLK Day. Um, this served as a much needed day to celebrate um, the life and legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. and what he fought for through various sessions where they could also build their schedules and um, choose what they wanted to learn about. So this addressed the many inequalities and, in, 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 and inequities in the current world as well as um, the past history. Dance Marathon also had a very successful um, event. It was the seventh annual consecutive um, Dance Marathon held at West High, and they raised over $21,000 through the event, um, t-shirts and other merchandise sale, as well as um, silent auctions. Um, West High has also reopened the West High Supply, which is um, a pantry <coughs> of school supplies, um, household supplies, food and other necessities for students and their families. Um, it was created to address the needs of students and their families in the West High community and also serves as a way to directly give back to our community. Um, although this is the first year for West High's girls um, wrestling team, we've already crowned our first state, champion, um, state champion, Salima Omari. So she won her final champion match in only one minute and 24 seconds, which is very <laughs> impressive. And I know the whole school is very proud of her. That's awesome. Yeah, um, West High's um, robotics team, Trobotics, was also a part of the finalist alliance and won the Think Award, which is an award based on thorough documentation and really proper use of the engineering design process. So this allowed them to advance to the next round of competition, which is actually this Saturday, which um, gives them a chance to make it to the Iowa State Championships. Um, additionally, two members of the team were also named National Dean's List semifinalists. Um, recently, eight graduating seniors from West High have also been named Presidential Scholar candidates. Um, so these selections will actually be made in April, but these students were nominated based on their academic achievements, leadership qualities, and strong moral character. Additionally, 20 students from West were also accepted into the SIVA concert or jazz band. Um, and then coming up, West High's BPA will also be attending the state conference in Des Moines, and both of our show choirs will compete at the competition in Benton this Saturday all I have for you today. Thank That's you for your great. time. Thank you so much. Have a nice night. Thank you. So next up we have Liberty High. <laughs> Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Beatrice Kasky and I'm a member of the Student Senate Executive Board member. Hi, I'm Ethan Long. I'm also a member of the Student Senate. Um, today we wanted to share with you some exciting news happening at Liberty High. So. So our athletic program has continued to be as successful as the varsity basketball teams took on City last night to add the boys' record of 9 and 8. The boys' swim team qualified for three, lays, three relays and 23 individual events at the district meet yesterday to become district champions for the second year in a row. We also ranked top in the state and are set to win the state championship title for the first time in a long time. <laughs> or ever. <laughs> uh, we're combined with West for the team. So that's it. Liberty High's varsity dance team went to nationals early last week. We were able to get ninth in jazz and eighth in palm after winning four state titles three times in a row. Yeah. Um, our music programs are also excelling with an orchestra concert tonight, and Liberty band members were accepted into the SEBA Honor Band over the past couple of weeks. Um, the show choirs have participated in two show choir competitions so far, and they got in second place. Um, this upcoming weekend, the jazz and show choirs will also be traveling to North Polk for another competition. Um, speaking of the musical program, Shrek the Musical is well underway, so they're excited to have that. Um, for the MLK month, last month, we celebrated MLK's legacy through Liberty High diversity speakers. So we had lots of uh, speakers come in dur during our academic homeroom time, Liberty time, at the end of the day, so students were able to learn from them. Uh, we also had, opposite of always, author Justin A. Reynolds come and talk to students about his inspiration for writing and ways you can pursue writing in the future. Um, our In Shock Club, which is our volunteering club at Liberty, working with the Rotary Club, uh, raised $1,143.28 for the Leukemia Fund. Um, yeah. As she explained, it's been a busy month so far, and in the new year, Student Center wants to continue to highlight the success of our students and the importance of belonging in our Bolts Matrix. As the next school year seems to be just around the bend, we're developing bylaws within our club and beginning an effort to get more students involved with extracurriculars. Um, we think it's important to develop an outreach committee 
so we're, um, we can work with other clubs to provide new opportunities and highlight the impacts on our school. Um, during the last couple of weeks, Student Senate has run an effort to educate and register eligible voters at our school in importance with the caucus coming up as well as voting in November. Um, and currently we are working with Project Earth and NHS to develop new sustainable programs at our school and volunteer opportunities. Thank you for your time and we hope to continue to develop with this tradition of our success. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a nice night. Um, Tate, hi, do we have a representative here tonight? If not, we'll move to our ICEA update with Brady Shutt. Hi, uh, President Godwin, Vice President ISO and Directors. It's nice to uh, be here tonight. Uh, just a reminder to the public and to all of us that the 13th is the statutory deadline for SSA, uh, SSA for Supplemental State Aid, and the Senate has come out with 2.1% and the house is at 2.5%. So uh, please contact people that you know. This is as much to you all as it is to people who are watching. I think we have an opportunity. The governor's budget, of course, called for 2.5%. There's uh, money to fully fund 2.5% with no, no problem. So uh, thanks for your advocacy. Let's keep it up. It's an important week. And I'd like to just also thank the board and the district. And I know Matt uh, you know, was involved with this and, and Amy as well as uh, Laura. Uh, Gray and the Equity Department, the Diversity and Equity and Inclusion Comprehensive Plan, I, I think, is a really important and, and uh, necessary step for our district. So I appreciate your unanimous support for that. I can tell you that, from my perspective, in the last uh, few weeks as a curriculum coordinator, we've begun uh, having conversations about what it means to have an equity lens, like when you're making curricular purchases. And I think that, that the DEI really is a catalyst for those sorts of conversations, which I, I think is really uh, important for us. We had uh, Debbie Bennett, who is one of our principals at Weber, came out to Liberty and did ACES training. Uh, Adverse Childhood Experiences training it was fantastic. She and Laura had put that together. It was a really, really good experience. Um, and we also had Teaching Tolerance, which is a part of the Southern Poverty Law Center, come in last week on Wednesday to do work with our fifth grade eighth grade, and then our uh, AP US history teachers on teaching hard history, American slavery, an initiative that they have. So I just, I think we have some good momentum. I want, you know, to, I appreciate your efforts in that regard and the efforts of, you know, our administrative teams in making that happen. And I think you're gonna see some movement. It's really critically important work. It's challenging work, but it's work that we all need to be engaged in. So, thank you. Thanks, Brady, for that update. Appreciate it a lot. Um, community comment, we have Eric Creech tonight. How much time do I have? Four minutes. For many people here in, in Iowa City, the Iowa City School District is viewed as an employer who creates an atmosphere of fear amongst its employees. It's not a supportive uh, employer for people who go through mental health concerns with their families. But it's not a supportive uh, environment for teachers who go through mental health problems themselves. Therefore, I don't know how it could possibly be a supportive environment for children with mental health. And something needs to be done about it right away. There's all kinds of retaliatory actions that are taking place for many people in the district. And when you go through it yourself with your family, and your family's put on the verge of a poverty level here, and half your income is taken from you because of their unfair practices, you hear from other people, and they all say the same thing. They either say, I had to sign something so that I would talk. I, I can't talk to anyone. I signed something to say I can't talk, or they say, I'm afraid to talk to you. I'm afraid to say something nice about you because I will be a target. So this is something that the board needs to take care of. Your employer is one employer, and I don't even know who it is these days because I don't see him now. It might be this gentleman temporarily, but the superintendents, your one employee, if I'm not mistaken, and you shouldn't be having hearings to make decisions about hiring and firing practices. That's HR's role and the superintendent's roles, so that's not even appropriate. The superintendent, when when come to about a problem is supposed to investigate it and do something about it, and HR is not supposed to be the boss of the superintendent. And the superintendent is not supposed to be the boss of a board. And you're not supposed to go to work and be afraid to even talk to your colleagues about challenges that you have with your employer. 
and the union needs to do their job. They're not, and I hope we can do something with the governor because I know she's got something to do with it too, but I just need the board to be committed to be the Iowa City community, school district. People give their lives to the Iowa City school district. 28 years my wife gave to you guys, teaching art to the children, and she was slandered. So I need something to happen, and it's, it needs to happen. Thank you, Eric. Um, we'll move into agenda approval for tonight. Is there a motion to approve uh, our agenda? I move that we approve our agenda. Second. Kim, ready to vote? Online voting is open. All votes have been cast and the motion carries with all directors voting in favor. Thank you. Our consent agenda. Um, who reviewed bills this period? Oh, I did. Yeah. Any comments, questions, observations? Everything looked fine. Yep, look good to me. Okay, thank you. Any uh, items that directors would like to pull from consent agenda? Motion to approve consent agenda. So moved. Second. Kim, ready to vote? Online voting is open. All votes have been cast and the motion carries with all directors voting in favor. Thank you. Um, we've got a public hearing, Sean. Scroll down here. Now is the time and place for the public hearing on the proposed plans and specifications for the 2020 Northwest Junior High Edition Project. The Board of Directors set the date for this public hearing on January 28th, 2020. Notice of public hearing was published in the Iowa City Press Citizen on January 29th, 2020. The district will receive bids on this project at 10 a.m. on February 25th, 2020 at the Educational Services Center located at 1725 North Dodge Street, Iowa City, Iowa 52245. Notice to contractors was published as required by law in multiple statewide plan rooms and on the Iowa City Community School District website on January 29th, 2020. Are there any questions from the board? Are there any questions from the public? Thank you, that concludes our public hearing. Uh, next up we've got a presentation, our quarterly financial report, Leslie. Uh, you have the report in front of you. Um, it's uh, through December, so for, we're halfway through the year. Uh, some of the categories, though, will only be essentially a third, like teacher salaries, since they're paid four twelfths uh, at that point in time. So you'll see some of the things when you look at the uh, expenditures that will not be at 50%. Uh, there will be some categories that will be over 50% because of the timing when you front load some uh, expenditures at the beginning of the year to get through the year. So um, if you look at the unspent balance page, we're still working at using 1.5% in the projections for next year as we presented at the last board meeting. Uh, as Brady pointed out, we hope to know by Thursday, uh, you know, if that number has changed and hopefully it's going upward for us and as soon as that's done, we will be um, reflecting that in next quarterly reports, but you're also due for a budget uh, report at the next board meeting, so hopefully we'll have more information and we can update that and, and keep that discussion going. Um, you also have in your uh, quarterly report the update of the bond uh, expenditures and those various projects as well as we've been doing for the last uh, couple years since the bond uh, referendum passed, so entertain any other questions. Charlie. Uh, uh, Leslie, I have a comment about one of the tables in the FY 22nd quarter report on page six. Okay, go ahead, Charlie. And uh, on that page, the, there's a table that compares cost for various categories mm -hmm. uh, for Ten, or the 10 largest districts in mm -hmm. the uh, state, including this one. Uh, I've been looking at that table off and on for the last several years, mm -hmm. and I actually don't like it. <laughs> and the reason for the board is that that table just looks at cost. It has no indication of what districts are doing with the money. 
that's uh, detailed in the table. Um, and I know I'm not su suggesting that you can or would change it, but I just would like the, uh, to, to comment to the board that the table to me is, per is simply useless because it doesn't show anything at all about our instructional effort and compared to the other districts that are also spending money. So if the table could show, you know, uh, achievement gaps, percent proficiencies, some indication of uh, how well the expenditures in comparison to the other districts is, is uh, uh, going towards our educational uh, to goals and purposes, that'd be great. Other comments, questions? Well, since we're on that chart, I was going to make a comment on it, too. You know, you look at it, it's all color-coded for those that can't see it out there, right? And green means we're basically spending less than other districts to, as Charlie points out, you assume accomplishing the same or more, right? But you don't know. You're just spending less or spending more on it. Um, my, I guess, comment slash question is, I know on the per-student operational um, is now an orange one. And I don't know if it's always been that way. It seems like we had more green in there. What all is in the operational part? Because I see instruction is pulled out from that, so I don't know what all is covered under there. Is it all facilities and things like that? Or? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Operational would be primarily uh, utilities, uh, custodial, and, and our maintenance area. Okay. So. Yeah. I, just trying to figure out, you know, I, in my head, you know, I'd be perfectly fine if we had a big red box on how much we're spending on instruction, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And everything else is green because that's, that's what we're constantly asked to do, right, is spend less everywhere else and put it all towards instruction. So, as, you know, the color itself or being better or worse than somebody else isn't the whole picture, but I, I wasn't sure what all was included in the different places so I appreciate and I don't that. disagree with you spending it all on instruction but we have to have lights on and we have to have uh, heat when it's uh, nine below like it's going to be Thursday morning or Friday morning so uh, we do have some of those given costs for yeah, right. operations for sure. so. and we have lots of buildings in our district and we've made the choice to have lots of buildings mm -hmm. and I think that is probably reflected in that number mm -hmm. as well well and we also made the choice to keep older, smaller buildings, yes. and that's yeah. going to definitely be inefficient as far as the right. operational cost goes. Yeah, that's trade-offs. Other comments on the quarterly financial report? I'll just point out, you know, one there that, um, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, when we do make cuts, um, they say, cut administration um, and keep it away from the classroom, but, you know, our rank in administration per student is, is one of the lowest in the state. You know, we're definitely bright green on this table. Um, so I think we do try to keep that pretty lean and away from the classroom. Anything else? Thanks, Leslie, for presenting that. Um, we'll move on to a discussion um, for portrait of a graduate. I think the intention of this item is for directors to agree on the three directors that will be part of the design committee for portrait of a graduate. We've had. Um, a lot of interest from directors. Um, this is an important initiative for our district. It's exciting. Um, I think we all want to, you know, participate and, and be engaged in the process. Um, we've got three slots. I know, Lisa, you've, ex you've expressed very strong, strong interest. Um, Ruthie and I think you've expressed strong interest. Mm -hmm. um, others have said yes, but maybe if, if others are presenting, then I'm happy to not be on the team. So. I'd like to suggest that Lisa and Ruthina for sure, and then amongst the rest of us decide who we would like to fill out that third slot. Um, so uh, Janet, I, uh, I didn't uh, respond to the request for interest uh, because uh, on my calendar, there's a, uh, for the March meeting, March 25th, there's a, 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 a negotiation session scheduled for secretaries, I think, <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> I volunteered to be on that team, so mm -hmm. <laughs> is there anything I can do? <laughs> be our negotiator. Yeah, so we, those are the kinds of trade-offs that we're going to have to look at. I know that is one of the requirements for Portrait of a Graduate is being able yep. to attend now. Um, uh, the, the, the negotiated um, sessions, it's not required for directors to participate. I think it shows a very strong sign of our support and solidarity with our um, 
uh, employee groups and, and feel strongly that if we're on the team, it's really, really important for us to be there if we at all humanly can be. Um, but um, there are trade-offs, and there's, there's multiples of us on those teams too, so um, I think I'm on that group as well. Yeah, right, and so if right. I'm on the negotiating team, then oh. that would free you up potentially for that one session. Um, I could cover you uh, in that one, but I think we need to, we, I, I feel strongly about maintaining the commitments with the negotiated uh, groups to stay part of those processes. Right. I don't know, Sean, JP. Well, I'd, I'd I'd be glad to defer to JP. I know that you know I feel pretty confident that the board's not washing their hand of it. The you know in the end, right? We're still going to have a pretty good say on what happens there. So I'm fine with uh, not being part of this group if uh, JP is interested in, in doing it. I would gladly defer. I, you know, I feel the same way, Sean. I think if if you do it, I could step back too. I you know I I, I guess my case for it is. You know, even before I got on, on the board, even, you know, as a teacher, this is the kind of stuff I've been thinking about for a long time in education, just, just how, what's the point? And that we're working with this system that's very old, that it doesn't match what our society needs. So I, I've been invested in it in a long time, just uh, intellectually and educationally. Um, but I feel, I would feel really confident with anybody, me too. any of the board members being there. I appreciate, you know, Lisa and Ruthie, and I think that's a good choice to have them um, lock in, but that's... You sold me, man. Okay. That's my case. <laughs> and it's sort of like everyone, I mean, I have total trust and confidence in board representation to be, bring our ideas to the conversation um, and to represent as well complete trust that uh, you'll be awesome. So are we saying Lisa, Ruthina, JP? That works for me. I would work with Neil. It's fine. Thank you. Thank Great. You. That's an okay. awesome team. Thank you all for uh, volunteering to do that and carry that important work forward. So um, it's exciting and it kicks off very soon. It's there was like right away. There was requests yeah. put out to other groups, right, to put in applications. So if you got that email or you're sitting there thinking about it and you're interested, I suggest everybody watching and listening, uh, if you're interested, put your name in and join the group. And the deadline is Friday. Yep. Yeah, perfect plug there, uh, Director Eyestone. Uh, especially uh, community members that do not uh, have children in the district, I think is a group we're a little bit low on right now uh, when we've kind of started seeing some of the applications or survey um, groups come in. So um, any community members that are vested in the process that don't necessarily have children, we want to get them represented too in their, in their school district. Great, thank you. And I, uh, I think, Matt, we're to process <laughs> Uh, contemplates providing translation if, uh, if participants re, uh, would benefit or require that. So. Yeah, I think we'll have a better idea of those needs once we know what the design team makeup is, but uh, we, we would certainly have those translators uh, there uh, to make sure everybody's needs are met that I've way. Been, I've been trying to recruit people that, pro that would, not, would need translation. Yep, perfect. Yep, we'll have all that lined up. Yeah. All right, thanks very much for that. Um, we'll move into our director liaison report. Any comments the directors would like to make? Uh, I, I would like to make a comment. On, on the event I went to last Friday, the Black Lives Matter in School Gala, um, it was a wonderful event. Um, I just want to note that we have two award recipients in the room with us tonight, our very own Athena Malone mm -hmm. and Monique Cotman. It was wonderful to see them recognized for all their hard work in the district and just want to congratulate them as well as all the other recipients from that event. It was very mm -hmm. cool. I wanted to note, in addition to Monique, we had, um, I, I believe, two, well, one other current school teacher and at least two other former ICCSD employees. So that was really great to see that um, they continue to put efforts forward in our schools to make sure that all of our students know that they're important, but especially our um, black and brown students. Thank you. Others want to make some remarks on their events from the last month? Um, I'll say, uh, you know, Lisa and I went to the Day on the Hill event. Um, uh, it's, you know, it was great to get in the Capitol. Uh, we talked to Senator Kinney uh, for quite a while, Senator Walls. Um, and, I, you know, I just think, um, you know, and then we heard from, from Senator Cornoyer and uh, Ross Smith from Waterloo in our, in our session, and I think, you know, there's a lot of support for public education this, this session, so uh, I'd encourage 
folks if they have, say, relatives from Sioux City or Muscatine or the Quad Cities, maybe to contact their legislators um, supporting. Uh, this isn't, you know, it's not, it, um, there's a lot of bipartisan work going on down there as far as supporting public education. So I think it's important to, to reach out and, and be respectful and let folks know uh, certainly that 2-5 is better than 2-1. Mm -hmm. um, but there's some other education bills coming and maybe we'll have some updates. Um, uh, there's a bill out there about therapeutic classrooms that is um, um, going to be important. It probably has a good chance of passing. It's a bipartisan bill. Uh, I, I have some concerns about some of the language that I've shared with, with my senator and, and, and in some details about handling kids with disabilities and, and kind of who's going to staff these classrooms and where that money comes from. Uh, and so uh, I, there's just a few things out there that are worth taking a look at. Uh, I just want to say in defense of myself a little bit, there, I don't have any, any uh, items listed under in my name, but I actually was doing something for the last <laughs> few, few weeks. So, and I didn't quite figure out that I actually have to send that information to the account before it gets on the agenda. Sorry. That's wonderful. If it's not in the board docs, Charlie, it didn't happen. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say, I, I listed this, but on February 3rd, I went over to Liberty High and watched um, a food prep service. Liberty uh, services several of the elementary schools in North Liberty, uh, as well as itself. And if no one has done this, I would highly recommend it. I mean, it's, it was pretty amazing to watch what goes into preparing some of the lunches for thousands of kids uh, in our district and the, the coordination that it requires, um, as well as the facilities. Um, you know, that's the goal. I mean, it's beautiful kitchen. And, and we should see what the kind of the gold standard is, especially when we're looking at um, the facility master plan too for city and west and our junior high uh, kitchens and what they can do in a production kitchen. And they might make you cookies <laughs> while you're there and send you home with them. But it, it was great and it was a couple hours in the morning um, and it was really fun. So I would That's encourage cool. anyone who hasn't done that to do I it. I might add that a new, new kitchen is under construction at city high as we speak. It's yes. in the plan. And at west high we just completed a new kitchen. Yeah. So all three of them are pretty well equipped now or will be equipped. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Um, shall we go to agenda setting? Um, we have a number, number of things coming up. Um, sorry, what am I missing? Legislative oh, legislative update. update. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, well, we talked about Day on the Hill. We're w talking and watching about the 2.1 versus 2.5. <coughs> you mentioned therapeutic rooms. There's a, there are a number of bills that are sort of in discussion right now. Um, yeah, JP uh, got me thinking. I, I, try and stay up to date uh, on getting the report from uh, Randy Richardson, who actually mm -hmm. came to the DPO meeting uh, last month and tries to update us as bills are going through. And I know uh, the big focus is always on the funding piece, but there are lots of bills that go through there that either hit us directly or kind of from the side. And those are the ones that really scare me. There's another voucher bill out there that just came out. Um, so. I, we're not, our advocacy isn't done when they land on the number. Um, yeah. They're gonna land on a number that's not gonna be sufficient in the end, so mm -hmm. advocacy is never done on that part. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of other stuff that's gonna go past this week. You know, If they land on a number this week, all those other bills are still out there. And some of them will be very helpful, I think, but some of them might have a lot of dangerous pieces to the, that could uh, do a lot of damage. So I think we need, just all need to be aware of what's out there. And if, you come across something that makes you kind of wonder a little bit, seek more information about it or, you know, talk to other people or come to our legislative forums that we have here and ask somebody directly about them because there, there's a lot of stuff that sort of gets forgotten as we just look at the money piece. Like and the bill to allow us to arm one employee for every 100 <coughs> Yeah, like that one. Yeah. yeah. Like that yeah, one? It, that one uh, I, I saw that bill come through and I was reading the language on it and uh, I was actually talking to uh, a candidate for Johnson County Sheriff and in that bill it says that the, John, the sheriff of the county where most of the students reside would pick that person and I said, hey, this could be you, what do you think about that? And he's like, what is that? And had no idea that was even a thing and I would suspect most county sheriffs don't even know that that's a bill so there are things that kind of just get 
-hmm. you know, put out there and see what sticks, I think. So it's important to be educated on it for sure. Our next forum here at ESC is February 28th at 4 p.m., a chance to talk with our elected officials um, as well as other school board and district personnel from surrounding districts. Mm -hmm. So, and, and our legislative lobbyist is, if I remember, is through the uh, Urban <coughs> Education Network. Is that right? Okay. And are we able to communicate with the lobbyist? Okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know, we're also a member of IASB, who also does some lobbying work down there as well. Okay. Uh, now, agenda setting. Um, I was getting ahead of myself. On the 18th, we've got an ed committee meeting. I think we're at Southeast Junior High to talk about Castle and the math curriculum pilot. Um, on the 19th, uh, we have a work session with the Iowa City City Council um, to talk about some zoning um, uh, zoning code um, uh, ideas, and that's going to be. Um, I think, Charlie, you actually uh, pr proposed that idea, and I'm really happy we're getting ready to have that with them. Um, and that's good. Um, then we've got sessions on the 25th. We'll start on the 25th with an exempt session on negotiations. Uh, we'll go into our board meeting on the 25th. We have a uh, consent agenda. Uh, we have budget assumptions and preliminary certified budget update. We've got some presentations, annual enrollment and demographics report. Um, we'll be talking a little bit about some information from our district regarding seclusion and restraint um, uh, practices. Um, and that's what we currently have on our um, board meeting for February 25th. Uh, we also have a work schedule, work session um, planned for that evening where we will have um, student newspaper representatives um, and district <coughs> action planning around vaping. Um, and there was some discussion about having that item actually at our full board meeting so that we could make sure that student representatives were, it was earlier in the evening for them. I don't know if the board would rather have, um, you know, make it easier for students to participate in that discussion and move that item to the full board or retain it in a work session format, which is a little bit more informal from a kind of discussion standpoint. So I'd like to hear folks' thoughts on that. Um, have we... So with the student representatives that will be there, have we checked in with them regarding their schedule? I think they are prepared to be here on the 25th. Okay. This would just be doing it earlier in the evening. For I them. mean, just looking at the regular board meeting, it doesn't... It's not super big. Right, yeah. it's not super heavy. And if it continues to stay that way, I think we would move fairly quickly to get back out there. I, 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 I personally would like to start the conversation doing a work session so it could be a little bit less informal. Yep. They can be at the table yep. um, because when we're at the board table, no. it's more yeah. us talking versus us having a conversation with the students. Yeah. And I, I, I agree, given that it's a fairly light agenda for the regular meeting, we can move, things, move through things fairly quickly and not make it a super, super late night for students. Sure. Does that sound reasonable? I just wanted to raise it. It was, uh, it was a, uh, an idea that I mean, the if director it, had. If it looks as though, um, as you two are doing agenda setting, that it may become <coughs> heavier, a heads up, and then that way we can change it. But I would really like to have an informal conversation to start that with the students and have that back and forth. Okay, that sounds good. We'll leave it as it is then. Um, and then the second topic for the work session that evening is around our RAM model, looking at our five-tier model and looking at potential revisions um, and starting that conversation. Anything else directors would like to see in those upcoming agendas? When do we get another update on P&G? Oh, I'll give you one on that. Uh, it's on the, sorry. It's on the board meeting um, policy review on the 25th, oh, and I can give an update there. Okay, awesome. Let's do that. We actually made really good headway at our last meeting. Like, got through a lot. That's good. <laughs> picking, yeah. up, picking up steam. We're, really we're still on the 400s, but we're almost, That's right. almost there. But we we'll have like 30 pages left. Right, <laughs> and it's out of 160-something, I think. It's a lot. Well done, and so we'll look for an update on the 25th. Yes. Thank you. Um, anything else in agenda setting? Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Work session.